What's up guys and welcome back to Monique. If you guys are new here, then what is up? My name is Erica. Hey, how you doing? And if you're into the history of the ancient Greeks and the Romans, maybe you're just into the mythology and maybe you are just confused as hell about what the f the Furies do. Well, do not worry, that is exactly what I'm going to be talking about in this video. So please hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you know every single time I post in the future. Also, it just really helps me get paid. So like subscribe anyways. I say that all the time, but like, please do it. Anyways, as you can see from the title of today's video and the fact I just ruined it, today we're going to be talking about the Furies. So the Furies are a group of goddesses in Greek mythology that I understand a lot of people are getting confused by. And that's because I get a lot of DMs of people asking me the difference between the Furies and all of these other different trios of minor goddesses. And I understand if you're not into mythology, then why, like, like, why would a system create all of these different trios of goddesses that all are like kind of similar, but also like kind of pop up and kind of don't, I get why you guys are confused. So you guys have asked me over on my Instagram a bunch of times to hammer out the differences between all of these trios and make it very simple for you guys to understand. So I thought I was gonna do one video just comparing all of them to show you guys the differences. I thought this one would be easier. However, there will be other trios of goddesses discussed. So you guys are gonna wanna check out those videos. I'll make sure that they are constantly popping up in the corner, whichever corner that is, in each of the videos so that you guys know that you can then click on the others and watch and see the differences and the similarities and all of that sort of shebang. So the Furies, the Furies specifically actually go under this name in ancient Greece, right? So this is when you read ancient literature, this is the name that they go under. It's just easier for you guys to be able to see it and identify it, I must say. That's kind of how I started, was just being able to identify the words and be like, I can't pronounce it yet, but that's what it is. But in most translations, they are called the Furies and that's because their Roman name is more so aligned with that. I'm so sorry if you could hear my stomach rumbling, by the way. I'm so hungry, but I told myself that I would film this video before I ate my chicken wings for lunch. So anyways, back to the video. The Furies are goddesses of vengeance specifically. So they basically monitor more so like unlawful crimes, if that makes sense. So like crimes against the gods, that's something that they would step in for. And crimes like homicide, that's another one, right? So things where they take the control out of fate, where people will take the control out of you know, somebody's destiny or whatever it happens to be. That's specifically when the Furies get involved because they're like, that is absolutely not okay. And also what you did was not okay by any law anyways. So we're gonna come and torment the shit out of you. But where did these goddesses of vengeance come from? You're probably like, okay, well, who were their parents? Where did they come from? What's their origin myth? And that is a little bit complicated. You'll find with these trios of goddesses, absolutely no one can agree on where they came from, who their families are. It is a little, Frustrating, I'll admit. So let's detail the three, yeah, yeah, the three most famous ways that the Furies are really noted. So first and foremost, they are noted as children of Uranus and Gaia. So Gaia is the earth goddess. Uranus was the like OG king of the gods, basically. And for those of you who don't know, he was overthrown by his son, Kronos. And Kronos, <laughs> he chopped off Uranus's genitals and then like threw them into the sea. This is a thing and this is kind of how, this is kind of, it is exactly how Aphrodite was born in this version of the myth. But the Fury supposedly, when that whole genital cutting off thing happened and the blood came from it, from the blood is where the Fury sprung, right? So that is one way that the Furies came into being. According to like the original, original first authors that we have, that's the Furies and that's their family line. However, a little bit later on, we have Aeschylus, who's a playwright, and he specifically said that the Furies, they came into being as children of Nyx. So Nyx is the nighttime, and supposedly they were just born from Nyx. No dad is mentioned, just Nyx, which is obviously very different than nighttime, as opposed to like the King of the Gods and the Earth Goddess. Very different, but that's what Aeschylus says. And lastly, we have Sophocles, and Sophocles says that the Furies specifically came from Erebus, which is the uh, god of darkness, and Gaia, who's the earth goddess again. So very different, three very different lineages for these trio of goddesses. Now you can basically pick your own as long as you can back it up with whoever the hell said it. I tend to go for the first one just because I find it easier and it ties into the Aphrodite myth as well, which is not the typical one that we use for Aphrodite, but it doesn't, doesn't matter. That's the one that I use. And as long as once again, you can reference who said it, you can reference where it came up. That's all that really matters when it comes to ancient history. Now the number of Furies, actually, this is really interesting. The number of Furies differs, which doesn't help us whatsoever. In fact, Euripides, I 
think is the first guy, he's a playwright, he's the first guy who notes that there were three of them, that actually before this, there was just a giant number of furies, like infinite furies. Okay, they never said infinite furies, but like basically they never put a cap on it. So this idea that there could just be furies popping up was a possibility technically. And then Euripides was like, all right, we gotta control this. There's only three of them, right? And here are their names. So the three names of the furies that even we go with now, these are the three names that we know of the furies. We have Electo. Electo is specifically sort of like, um. Oh God, I don't want to say uncontrolled anger, that's not right, but persisting anger, that's a way better way of describing it. Wow, I'm so impressed with myself. So persisting anger is Electo, we then have Tisiphone, which is spelt this way. You can also say Tisiphone, I've heard that before, but my teachers always said Tisiphone. So she though is the goddess of um, like avenging murder. I have to think of these on the spot, as you guys know, I don't have any notes, but yes, avenging murder is specifically what she does. Very niche, right? She covers a very niche kind of crime here. Then lastly, we have Megara, I think it said Megara, I, have, I actually don't know, I'm gonna be totally honest with you. It's spelled like this though, as long as you can identify her, it's pretty much fine. So she though is the goddess of jealousy specifically, right? So those are the three of them though, those are the three theories that we get, and those are the three that most people go with in the majority of things. We don't oftentimes reference these odd numbers of theories that pop up, it's specifically these three and those are their names. What did the Furies do though, and where did they live? This is also important because in mythology people have homes and you need to know where they reside. With the Furies, they primarily resided in the the underworld. I would say about 99.9% .9 of the time they are down in the underworld and they are overseeing the torture, shall we say, of uh, criminals down there, right? That's specifically what they did. And it was a trio, like I said, in those times it was a trio, they would be down there, they would just make sure that everybody was, you know, getting the punishment that they needed. The Furies literally never come up to the upper world. I just want to like highlight that and make that really, really clear that they were not just sort of wandering around the mortal world. This doesn't happen. That with other gods, yes, they do. If we look at the myth of like Actaeon, for example, he accidentally stumbles across Artemis. That is something that happens with the main gods and some minor deities, but it does not happen with the Furies. You will never just like randomly run into the Furies on the street. They have better things to be doing, okay? When they would come up to the mortal world, because that does happen sometimes, and when they would do that, it was specifically because they were called on, they were summoned in order to torture a criminal or something along those lines, right? So they were just asked to do their job that they did in the underworld, in the upper world, and they were directly asked to do that. They never just did it on their own accord. They'd be like, fine, okay, you called me, I'll come, no problem. That's why they would do it. And a very famous example of this is Orestes in the Oresteia. So the Oresteia is a trio of plays by Aeschylus, where he details Agamemnon's homecoming from the Trojan War, right? So Agamemnon, the war hero, he goes home. Uh, very long story short, he gets murdered by his wife and then his children avenge him by killing her. And so when Orestes kills the mum, when Orestes kills Clytemnestra, the Furies are called to go and torment Orestes because that's matricide. And remember that goes into the whole homicide and like all of that sort of stuff that I listed at the beginning, being like, <laughs> you know, what they're goddesses of. So because he did that, they were then asked to come up and torture him. And they did it in the form of like ghosts, right? But in this play, just to clarify, there weren't three of them. Uh, there were a number of them that, that literally, poor Orestes is, absolutely tortured and tormented by them throughout the entirety of the play. It is heartbreaking. But actually what I should mention about that is that actually the play is called the Eumenides. It is not called the Furies and it is not called this word. It is called the Eumenides and that is another way that you can refer to the Furies. I don't know if I'm helping. I feel like I'm actually making this more complicated for you guys. Let me know in the comments below. Let me know by liking this video. If you guys are actually finding this helpful of who the Furies are, like this video. But even then in mythology, I think what's important to take into consideration is that this is not a linear, like even the timeline is not linear. The characters are not linear. That people pick up these characters, it's very much like fantasy. People pick up these characters, they decide, oh, actually this would be like a cuter look, or this would be a nicer story, or this would be interesting to dive into this character. Like that's how this whole world works. And the Furies are a perfect example of that, that over time, they change, they adapt, they kind of become whatever the author needs them to be. But I guess we should probably end with what the Furies looked like, because I think that's kind of important. So when you look at art, there are obviously there are depictions of the Furies on pottery. Some people are like, why not? And they are oftentimes old ladies, and they'll have like a really long dress on that's actually, as soon as I came out of my mouth, I was like, that's not entirely true. Sometimes they have short dresses on, but the way you usually know that they're the Furies is that there are poisonous snakes on them. And not in a sense of like Medusa, how Medusa has like snakes for hair, 
The Furies will have them like uh, like around their arm, maybe. Around their waist is a really common place for the Furies to have these um, poisonous snakes um, in their hair. Sometimes in the hair, not as hair, but in the hair are the snakes. And that's how you can spot that they're Furies and and I want to stress this, oftentimes on pottery, they'll write it. So it's really easy to spot the Furies when somebody has labeled them as Eumenides. People always tell us who they're drawing because it's really hard to differentiate between all of these different goddesses, especially the minor ones. So if you're looking at a pot and you're not entirely sure that these are the Furies, you're like, mm, there's a number of them and they do have the snakes, but I'm not really sure. Just look really closely and oftentimes they're labeled. But that's really it for the Furies. It's a really short video. I just thought that I would clear that up. And next time I'll be doing the Graces to clear those three up because again I know that's another trio of goddesses that people get confused with. So um yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this. I hope it helped and um, we'll be seeing you next time with the Graces here on Monique. We'll see you then.